So I'm pretty stoked about showing this guy off. Uh, I've been working on this guitar for a very, very long time. Um, this guitar um, is an old Sears Roebuck Silvertone um, that came in on a trade um, from a longtime customer who always brings me a bunch of really, really cool old stuff. Um, and uh, it came in and just in just such poor condition. It needed an Ecri set. It had uh, it had cracks. It had brace separations. Just all of the stuff that you could possibly you know want to repair on an older guitar. This this guitar had need of those repairs. Um, and so um, I probably have spent um, you know a week or so. Uh, off and on kind of taking this on and off the bench and, and doing little things here and there and today I finally got it set up and playing and as soon as I heard the tone that was coming out of this thing I was just so pleased because it just made all of that work worth it this is such a nice sounding guitar it sounds like honey it looks like honey it's just really gorgeous <laughs> So as a customer, you know, you might be hearing that, you know, all that repair work was done to it and kind of thinking, well, you know, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to pick up that guitar. Actually, this is really, really a good, a good deal for somebody who's looking for an old vintage guitar. And let me explain why. You don't have to take my word for it. Do your research, do your reading and, and, you know, look at stuff at the store, go and, go and compare prices and everything. Um... But from my perspective, as somebody who works on these things and has tried working on, you know, working on other things like repairing old cars, um, I will tell you that buying an old, an old vintage guitar is kind of like going and buying a classic car. So let me tell you a little story. I once got a, uh, I once got a really cool old Ford. It was a 1963 Ford Falcon um, off of uh, Craigslist, and I got that thing for like four. I got that thing for like 500 bucks, and uh, man, I was so excited. I thought that was a great deal, and I was young, um, and I had no idea what I was getting into because the car itself may have been, you know, 500 dollars, but it was like a 500 dollar paperweight. Um, when we got into working on it, you know, we found out that it was going to need, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars in parts. Um, you know, there was stuff in there that we didn't feel comfortable working on that we we're going to have to pay people to work with. And so by the end of the day, like this, this whole project ended up looking like it was going to, like it was going to be tens of, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to get this thing, you know, really rolling nicely. Um, and you know, it, uh, we did end up just kind of pitching that idea and, and, and selling that car to somebody who is better qualified to do that stuff than us. But buying older guitars can kind of work out the same way. I can't tell you how many customers I've had come into the shop with uh, some, you know, thing that they thought was a really good deal. Uh, maybe it was an old Gibson or an old Guild or something that they had picked up for like a few hundred bucks. You know, it was a guitar that sometimes goes for, you know, several thousand dollars. And I take a look at it and I have to be the bearer of bad news because when I look inside, I see all the brace separations and the, uh, and the cracks. I see that the bridge is coming up and I see that the neck needs to be reset. And at the end of the day, like, you know, in some cases it's a death of a thousand cuts. It's a lot of little tiny repairs that need to be done. And in some cases it's really major structural work like neck resets that are just expensive on their own that need to be done. And you end up with a guitar that uh, while you may have bought it for $300, in order to get that thing playing again and playing really nicely, you know, you're looking at probably, you know, between $700 and $1,500 worth of work. And that's a real bummer. Um, so... This guitar has already had all of that stuff done. It did need a neck reset. The neck reset has been done. That's like, you know, it's like a $400 repair, uh, sometimes more, depending on what it is. This guitar has been refretted. That's like a $300 job. It's already been done. Um, this needed a bridge re-glue, as these guitars often do, and that would be like, you know, $60, $70 job in and of itself. Um, the nut and saddle have been replaced with with a, a custom cut bone and that would by itself be about a hundred bucks and so if you've been keeping track on a calculator you're kind of seeing where i'm going with this which is that um more work has been done to this guitar than what i am charging for it and the reason that that is happening is because um 
again, these are projects that I take in and I kind of work on, on and off on them and I get them done at my own pace. And so no one's yelling at me to get these things done. And I just enjoy doing this work. And I enjoy getting these old guitars playing again because I would rather this little piece of history go into somebody's arms who is going to play it and enjoy it for decades to come uh, than see it end up, you know, hanging on a wall somewhere. It's kind of a sad decoration, a reminder that it's a busted old instrument that's not going to, that no one's going to fix or um, end up, you know, in a dumpster somewhere, which uh, a lot of these guitars do. So, um, it's worth it to me to see these things get playing again, and it's worth it uh, to me uh, to get these to people who are going to play them. Um, this is kind of a labor of love, and so um, these old vintage guitars that I set up, um, you know, they're not necessarily something that I make bank on, but um, they're something that I, I definitely enjoy. Um, I enjoy seeing go to people who are gonna who are gonna really love them. This guitar deserves to go to somebody who's really gonna love it. The tone out of this thing is so nice. The patina and the aging on this guitar is just so beautiful. Um, it's a really really cool, really really cool instrument. Um, some other stuff that happened with this guitar when it was in um, was I installed uh, some custom fit bone bridge pins. These pins are individually fit per hole. Um, so you get a nice tight fit and helps a little bit with sustain, helps a little bit with uh, with some clarity and some upper register notes. Um, matters to people who have uh, the ear to listen for that, um, and might matter to your you know recording tech when he's you know in there doing the final mix. Some you know some of those frequencies might be things that you want. Um, I've gone in and, and really lubricated and gotten these old Waverly tuners working well again. Um, and if you've ever picked up uh, one of these old vintage Harmony guitars, um, Silvertone was made by Harmony back in the day. Um, you know, you kind of you can kind of feel how stiff those often are, and that's not the case with these tuners. These have been really worked over. Um, the uh, neck on this guitar, by the way, um, speaking of old Harmonies, is not one of the baseball bad necks. This is a really really comfortable neck. Um, width and thickness wise just very very nice to play if you've picked up a, uh, a guild that's been made in like the last 20 years this is pretty comparable um, the uh, neck reset is kind of a big deal and I'm gonna link to my neck reset video um, in the description here so you can kind of get more of a sense of that because I don't have time to talk about it today but, but basically what that means is that the action on this guitar is really nice and low but that you've got a nice high saddle to work with and so that means that you've got low action with lots of volume and lots of tone that's a big deal most vintage guitars need a neck reset and that's a very expensive repair again it's like a 400 something dollar repair you you know, usually, and usually it comes with other stuff. Usually you need, you know, partial refrets and stuff along with it. And uh, it's really cool that that's been done because that means that this neck angle is going to be stable for decades to come. So basically what you're getting here is, uh, is an instrument that, um, that has all the nice perks of buying a vintage guitar with all of the tone and the aging and just all of the history and just everything in it. Um, but with the added benefits of all of the nice stuff that comes with buying a new guitar, which is that it's going to be stable and everything is going to work right and it's going to, and it's going to play correct, it's going to play nice and, and you know, all of that, all, and all that good stuff. And so the setup that this guitar has is basically what I would give to a brand new Martin if it were brought in for a setup. It plays so comfortably and so nice and the tone out of it is just so great. <laughs> It's also a ladder brace guitar, um, which, you know, if you're not familiar with what that means, most modern guitars have an X brace thing going on, um, which Martin started doing in the 1930s. Um, but prior to that, you had um, parallel braces. Um, it's not parallel bracing, but they're uh, braces running parallel to each other along the, along the top of the, uh, you know, in the top of the guitar. And it produced a different sort of tone, which is why this guitar doesn't sound like maybe some newer guitars that you've heard, because the bracing is completely different, and the bracing plays a huge role in, in how the guitar sounds. And... Um, you know, if you're if you're into older blues, if you're into older country music and folk music, chances are this is going to be a tone that's going to work out really well for you because this may have been the style of guitar that the person who you have in your head was playing. Um, because if it's you know if it's some of those old timers um, like Lead Belly, Lead Belly was uh, was probably playing on a ladder brace guitar in many of the recordings that you've heard. 
Um, I would say that the same probably goes for many other uh, people of that same era. So um, this may be this may be a sound that you're looking for. Um, it's definitely got the look, um, and you know if you're if you're into playing some older stuff, this is this is just a really really great guitar. Um, so there've been some crack repairs in the back, and uh, if you can't tell where they are, well. I guess that means that I did my job well. Um, there, uh, you know, the bridge has been re-glued. Um, neck has obviously been reset, refretted. New nut, new saddle, new bridge pins. Um, one other thing that I've done to this guitar is that since this is a screwed-on pick guard, um, there's sometimes some buzzing issues and some uh, kind of uh, muffled sort of feathery stuff that that does to tone as in it, it, it kind of muffles stuff and makes it unclear and so uh, what I like to do with these is I actually like to um, uh, glue these down with a little bit of contact cement which is not uh, it's reversible it's completely reversible uh, washes off really easy actually um, it's the same stuff that you would use for uh, gluing down a modern pick guard but the reason that I like doing that is because it, it secures the pick guard to the top of the guitar um, and just you know, prevents all of those issues from happening, um, and it doesn't change the look at all. And like I said, it is reversible, so if you don't like that to be the case, it can be popped off, and you know, you can get that stuff cleaned off really easily in like uh, five seconds with a rag. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just play a little bit on this guitar and kind of play you out so that you can hear what this sounds like. Um, and I'm going to try to do a uh, recording with a uh, higher quality microphone that I'm going to link in the description. It'll likely be a little Dropbox link um, that will uh, um, have a much higher quality, much higher fidelity. Um, so you can really hear what this guitar sounds like because it's really got a nice voice. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and play you out. Um, this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. If you live in Seattle and you want to come by and play this thing and I still have it, um, give me a call and uh, I can make that happen for you um, and I'm also going to have this up for sale on my reverb page if you want to peruse that and see what uh, what else I have there or you want to pick up this guitar um, and uh, hope you enjoyed the talk that I've been given here and uh, I hope that if you have uh, repair work and you happen to be in the Seattle area that you consider giving me a call thank you and have a great one Thank you.